you talking I'm just, about? I'm just, I'm like, what just are you t- being very clear. I'm being very clear. Um, Who are you talking about? Nothing you said. Nobody disagreed I'm just, with. I'm just I didn't. stating because you all, some of you are in an echo chamber, um, basically stating that people shouldn't yeah, well, be you, upset about what happened. Respectfully, no, no, if no, you no, were in the conversation a little bit longer, you would have heard it. Up. Because I, as I let, said, this was just a first step and they no, should have well, said that. No. That I said that, but you weren't but here. So you bill, probably should stay in the no, room a little bit longer before you start. To the floor, yeah. Period. They should have moved forward with the current bill. There could always be amendments. Always. Okay, okay. okay. And again, no one's agreeing, disagreeing with uh, that either. So you just did all that for nothing. That. That's not what I was hearing at first. Can and I'll step down. answer to the title now? Um, as I've Thank always, you. I've stated, I've stated, and I'm in California. I've always stated it, especially in the last 20 years. Republicans and Democrats work together. They work together. Um, they are bipartisan, um, and the Democratic Party is more conservative. Um, maybe not on like social issues, but when it comes to finance issues, yes. If people thinking the amount of money going to social services in um, California is a lot, no, a majority of it goes to like developers, um, nonprofits, um, and the people who work in these nonprofits make barely any money. The people who come through these nonprofits to get help barely get help. There's not enough housing. Um, schools are closing up and down the state. Um, and it, um, they're moving towards more charter schools, which is neither here or there at this point. Um, this is a for-profit state. So if you want to make money, there is money here. For-profit. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Go ahead, Marcel. Um, hello, Hills. Hey, Buffalo. Hello, everyone else. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to speak to the title. Yes, the Democrats are the same segregation as Dixie Crack Party. But I look at segregation a little differently. Segregation today, physical segregation, like blacks there, whites there. America is actually more segregated today than it was during Jim Crow. Now, segregation, I hate it. It's not like I lived through it, but I hate the concept of it because it's the government telling people where they can go and cannot go. And I do not agree with that. However, I don't think there's anything wrong with us as freemen having our own communities and investing in our own communities. So I would not lose sleep if I'm not living next to white people. I have never lived next to white people. I've always lived around other freemen as I do right now. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. But segregation was not just about you can't live here and you live over there. It was also about, I'm going to deprive the Freeman area of resources. I'm going to make sure you do not get resources. I'm going to make sure that the people, the freemen in those areas do not get resources. Segregation today is economic segregation, where freemen are segregated to the bottom of society in a country rebuilt and White Americans, I'm not saying there are not poor, impoverished white Americans. There's plenty. And a lot of them are impoverished because it's a byproduct of what this government has done to freemen. But by and large, white Americans have the bulk of the wealth in the United States of America. Some of them are now falling behind. And it's a byproduct of the legacy of Jim Crow, redlining, all the other nasty stuff this nation has done to the freemen. The Democrats support that segregation. Matter of fact, I think they support it more than the Republicans do. They're just better at putting a smile on it. I'm not surprised at all what went down in California. Not one bit. Hilda, if you remember that room you did, I said that this was going to happen. I absolutely said that it would be the Democrats who would do what you said they would do. They would at least talk about it. And remember, I said exactly, talking about it is not enough. Just talking about it, but doing nothing about it, that's insulting because you're getting the Freeman votes. I'm not saying all Freeman are voting for them, but of the Freeman votes that are casted, the majority of them go to Democrats. That's not talking about it. That's action. 
But I say, I'm not okay with them just talking about it. I'm not okay with them tickling my ears. I want action. I said they will talk about it, but when it's time to take action, they will not act on it. They will sabotage. That's exactly what they did. I did say also, we have just as much of a chance of getting reparations from the Republicans as we do from the Democrats. I did not foresee a Republican trying to bring it to the floor. Now, that guy has been very honest that he has not been supportive of reparations. He's been honest about that. But the fact that he was willing to let the democratic process play out, that he was willing to bring it to the floor and to really force the Democrats' hands. The Democrats have a super majority in California, super. They don't need to consult with the Republicans about anything. And yet it took a Republican who is a first generation American, the child of Lebanese immigrants, to try to bring it to the floor. And it was Democrats. And I'm thinking freedmen Democrats that sabotage it. I knew it would happen. So they're absolutely the same surrogationist party. Um, I don't know if it's okay, Hill. I would like to ask Arrow a question. If that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. And I want to know, did you attend any of the hearings that they had in California where you could make comments? Because I, I no. did several of them. Did you attend to make your viewpoint, to give your feedback? No, I do not live in California. No, I did not attend any of the meetings. I don't either. I live in South Carolina. I haven't been to California since I visited for the first time, which was in 2019. And yet I attended several of the meetings. I gave several. To be quite honest. Okay. okay. To be quite honest with you, even if I would have went, I thought from the beginning this was going to fail because as someone brought it up, reparations is a federal issue. It's never going to go through that's a state true. ever. Right. So I wouldn't have showed up in Can the I first finish place. Can I please? Yeah, that's true. Reparations is a federal issue. Historically, I've been against quote unquote state reparations initiatives, but the benefit they have is that they're educational. The benefit is that even if reparations is a federal issue, every single state in this country owes our people. So anything that our people can get on the state level should go to our people. And if a state is able to come up with direct cash payments, then damn it, I support it. If a state is able to come up with land allotment or compensation for stolen land, I support it. Anything that could be status-based that a state can do, I support it. But if nothing else, this is educational. And those public hearings they had, people from all over the country gave comments about how it needs to be status-based. It was a very, very vicious fight for this to be status-based. And I will tell you right now how this is educational and how this has helped all of our people. I'm here in South Carolina. And I have had several South Carolinians say, oh, yeah, the freedmen. I heard about that in California. Oh, reparations. I see what they're doing up there in California. That has helped to educate the freedmen South Carolinians. And I'm sure people in other states can probably give similar experiences. So all I'm saying, Arrow, if we are going to be critical and we absolutely need to have all the smoke because this is something that we are owed. And if people are saying that advocating on our behalf, we have the right to be critical. I have to tell Mary Ann Wilson that same damn thing. You don't get to say you're a reparationist and because you are claiming that you're for reparations, we, the freemen, can't criticize you. We just kiss your feet. Absolutely not. However, we're going to criticize a process that we are obligated to participate in that process and to help make it what it should be. And that is all I'm going to say right there. Do you have a, a I will be going to the New York one though. They've already started, didn't they? They already uh, elected their members or their chair and co chair. Yeah, sure do. So I hope you learned something, RO. You know, and, and don't, you know, go around spreading. The only thing I learned was that Camilla Moore was not appointed by the governor. Everything else I said was 100% correct. I'm sorry. I want to go back oh. into that, but you wasn't 100% correct about everything. No, I was. No, Arrow, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was. was everything audience. else I said was correct. I can give a third um, party viewpoint. I was in the audience, and you did say 
that direct cash payments was not one of the recommendations from the task force. It absolutely was. The legislators decided not to go with direct cash payments, but the task force did recommend direct cash payments. They absolutely did. Okay, I thought we went over that again, and I made my point clear that the task force, when they ended on twenty, the tw uh, in June twenty twenty three, the recommendation for cash payments was in there, and then I said in January the legislator decided not to put it into the to the legislation. I made that very clear. That's not what you originally said, but okay, but and I was listening. I I went yeah, I went back and we talked about it again. See, the people got to listen. Yes, I said that the first time, but then we went back through it again and we went back through when the task force was done and when the recommendations were made in January. So you've been wrong so about you, two things, you, you not gotta one thing. So let's make that correct. So no, okay. So that's two exactly. things out of the so you, 50 I said. said. So that's two things out of the 50 said I said. But I'm glad that me and you agree. And okay, I was, I was wrong things. about those two things. I was wrong about wrong those about two things. things. I was wrong about those two that things, but I, but as we Thank all agree, as we all agree, this was bullshit. We don't need a Freedmen's Borough. I don't care what you say. That has nothing to do with right no, We don't all agree, sir. So, as I said, that was bullshit. And did anybody think that they were going to get reparations from that? You're, oh, well, sorry. It ain't happening. And the same thing's going to happen here in New York, and I will be at those meetings. So, what is your plan? My plan is to not vote for either of them, vote third party and let the Republicans destroy the Democrats. And if that means they have to destroy this fucking country, too. Oh, well, How does that get us that's my plan. Matter of fact, matter of fact, what I think should happen, I think all black people should vote for the Republicans and let them take away the fucking uh, let them pa pass an abortion bill. And then let's see if the Democrats will take black people serious the next time we ask them if we need help. How about that? If you lose your reproductive rights, I bet you'll take black people serious. Then that's my plan. But people don't want to go there. I think a lot of us. No, I, I can support that. I'm about to say that doesn't bother me. Hell, I don't like elective abortion anyway. A lot of black people, act, black freedmen actually don't. So my thing is, as long as we have a plan to get us reparations, that's fine. I also want to say about I the bet you that Bureau. Do it. You know that reparations, every time it's been done in this nation, it's always been a department set up to distribute them. When the Guamanians, this just happened back in 2000, y'all, oh, what year was that, y'all? So with the Guamanians, um, 2016, I think, when, or 2000, yeah, 2000, no, 2015, when the Guamanians under the Obama administration got reparations, they set up a department specifically for the Guamanians. When the Iranian hostages got reparations, they set up a department specifically for them, specifically to distribute the reparations. The Holocaust survivors who get reparations, they have the claims conference that specifically deals with everything related to them getting reparations. Native American tribes to get reparations, it goes through their tribal governments that act as the channel that distributes the reparations and deals with everything related to that. There has in this um the red uh, uh the radiation and compensation the radiation exposure compensation act I cannot remember the acronym right now but the people who are exposed to radiation who are getting reparations that's a form of reparation we don't talk about a lot but they've been getting it since the 1990s they have the department specifically set up for them to get their reparations it's just something that's not well known so there's always been a channel. An agency that handles reparations payments. And here's the thing how else are we going to get it? It's going to come through some entity. It's either going to come through the large bureaucratic entity of Congress, where we have to probably chase down this congressman, that congressman, that congresswoman, that congresswoman, or it can go through a much smaller agency whose only function is to make sure that we get specific tangibles for our status. It's going to come through one or the other. It's either going to go through the large bureaucratic structure of Congress, or it can go through a smaller agency that's status-specific for us. If I had to choose, I want a status-specific agency just for us that we can go to, and they can quickly respond to our issues. You know, uh, people were going around... Uh saying, oh, um, New York paid the um, Jewish people 
reparations of I forgot what the amount of money was, but everybody was going around saying that. And really what it was was an office that the state of New York set up to assist Jewish people with reclaiming things that were stolen from them from like insurance companies and their um like uh artwork and different things like that and so this is not an uncommon thing the the and the state pays for that office to be there and they support those people i just I don't understand. I think, well, I'm going to keep what I think t- to myself about it wrong. And, and Hilda, thank you, Marcel. I, I've been kind of reading up on um, the segregationist Dixie Crap Party just so I can get a better understanding of what it is that they really represent. Say that one more time. I was just about to request the one. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I'm just reading up on it right now so that I can contribute. I feel like I can contribute an educated opinion on on the situation. But um, I definitely think that, how do I say this? The the segregationist Dixie Crap Party harmed us. And I definitely believe that the Democrats of today are harming us uh, as our own group specifically. Like, we may... (sighs) receive some benefits from the Democrats in that they are using, utilizing or putting forth these universal uh, policies or these minority people of color specific policies where we get a piece of it. And to some, I guess, especially um, black Democrats, they are seeing that as a benefit. And just for me personally, um, well, they see it as a benefit to where they can not be offended by the Democratic Party not dealing with anything specific for us. And so what I see also as a problem is, great, all of those universal policies and those minority people of color coalition policies that they are, um, you know, put turning into law, they don't address the, the systemic problems that we have. For example, recently... Uh, VP Harris is coming out with uh, a housing program, uh, a, a home buyers program for new home buyers or first generation home buyers. Um, and there are, so for black people that can qualify for that, great. But because of the systemic problems, the systemic issues that we have dealt with generationally, a disproportionate number of black descendants of emancipated people in this country are not going to be able to qualify for that. And so we're automatically shut out of that based off of this government not taking care of those systemic issues and rectifying those systemic issues. And so to me, those universal policies are not going to help us get out of this economic segregation that we are experiencing and I see that across the board in all of these policies and so this is like when we're talking to the Democrats well they would have to change the rules like they uh, the state and you know at the state level like they do it for immigrants like uh, illegal immigrants wasn't at one point in time able to participate in uh, government housing programs like section 8 and you know, other programs like that, but they change the rules so they can participate. But let me just refresh the room real quick before you before you finish. All right, for those who aren't familiar with the um, Dixiecrats, were, the Dixiecrats were Democrats, but they were Southerners, and they were very racist and um, against Black people. So when the Democrat Party... Um, <clears throat> 